Die Schlacht um Charkow. This nice winter footage is from mid-February of 1943 and shows Leibstandarte tank formations and grenadiers operating during the Third Battle of Kharkov. It's from the German newsreel series Deschegg Monatsschau. This is my second video covering that battle using an original German combat report, which includes translated captured Soviet documents as a framework. If you haven't seen that first video, I suggest you go back and take a look. The report has four pages. The first page describes the involvement of the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking, the 7th Panzer Division, and the 11th Panzer Division in an encirclement and then pocket elimination maneuver. This is page two of the report. The following translations are from captured documents that were discovered at the divisional headquarters. Top secret, copy number two. Two, group commander, lieutenant general, comrade Popov, and commander of the southwestern front, general of the army, comrade Baututin. During the last eight days, the 4th Guard Panzer Corps has managed to hold off the continual attacks of a far superior enemy. Everyone in the Corps, myself included, understands that we are out here alone and must rely upon ourselves to accomplish this important task, and therefore must fight to the end. The heroes of our tank formations have been willing to sacrifice for the good of our cause, for the Red Army, determined to hold out until the arrival of the rest of the army group. Yes, 1943 thus far has been a fateful year in Russia. 1943 had not started well for the Germans. After the fall of Stalingrad on February 2nd, the Soviets surged forward with Operation Star against Army Group South. The operation, which included four tank corps and intended to capture the cities of Kharkov, Kursk, and Belgorod, was led by General Lieutenant Markian Popov. On February 16th, Manstein pulled out of Kharkov on the 19th, the Soviets moved into that city and advanced to within 30 miles of Zaporizhia, which is where Army Group South and Luftflotte 4, or Air Fleet 4, were based. For better orientation, this Russian map shows the order of battle for the Third Battle of Kharkov from the 1st to the 19th of February. A majority of the decisive combat took place here in the region to the southwest of Kharkov. Our original report describes events farther to the south relating to the 40th German Panzer Corps. Around here, the positioning of the 7th and the 11th Panzer Divisions is clear. The W represents the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking. The report continues. Heute, am 18. 2. 1943. Today, the 18th of February 1943, combat operations involving our severely understrength corps has continued. Under constant and considerable pressure from a heavy flanking attack, the 10th Tank Corps held. As the war progressed, it was much less common to see prominent swastika flags being carried or draped over vehicles, like this clip from the first video on the battle. The practice, intended to avoid friendly fire accidents, was largely stopped because from late 1942 on, the Luftwaffe rarely enjoyed air superiority. An important reason the German Wehrmacht was successful during the Third Battle of Kharkov was that the ground troops received much more air support than usual. Luftflotte 4 was operating with Army Group South 
and was under the command of Wolfram Freiherr von Richthofen. During the battle, he had managed to increase the number of sorties from a daily average of 350 in January to around 1,000 throughout February. On the 22nd, it even reached a high of 1,500 sorties. Also, just as the ground forces had been focused to attack together to gain local numerical superiority, air power was marshaled in the same way. Less targets were attacked, but with much higher intensity, and the results were devastating. The enemy, having brought forward considerable reinforcements, focused its pressure at one location, but also simultaneously attacked along the broad front. In this way, they managed to break through our defensive lines. Our tanks continued fighting in small groups until dusk. Only after the arrival of the first elements of the 10th Tank Corps did I give permission to the staff, which had no capacity at all to defend itself, to begin to withdraw. I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters who made buying that original report possible. If you're not yet a member, I ask you to consider becoming one. In addition to helping this channel grow, you also receive access to exclusive film footage that can't be shown here. Create a free account on my website at military1945.com and take a look at an example clip. I think that you'll find it interesting. Ich nehme an, dass die Garde Soldaten I assume that the Guard soldiers that have honorably sacrificed their lives have fulfilled their duty to the High Command. I ask for permission for the remainder of the Corps to be allowed to move out of the area around Mochiashevo, Dobro Polje, and to the area of Belikoye Pole, Malo, Vasilyevka, Company. Since I have no way to communicate the condition of the Corps to Comrade Baututin directly, I ask that you personally report that information to him. The next video in the series will be uploaded in a few days. I suggest that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're informed when that has been done. Thanks for watching.